Today, we're teaming up with AMD to check out the 7000 series GPUs. Built on AMD RDNA 3 architecture, the 7000 series graphics delivers next generation performance, visuals, and efficiency. A pixel perfect experience starts with the AMD Radiance Display Engine, allowing you to immerse yourself in your favorite visual worlds with stunning image clarity and up to 68 billion colors at up to 8K 165Hz. As games dial up graphics fidelity, the requirements to play at max settings change, and RX GPUs are designed design with large amounts of video or memory ranging from up to 8GB up to 24GB. The 7000 series is designed to accelerate advanced AI experiences with over two times stronger AI performance than the previous generation. They're perfect for accelerating local AI workloads, processing large machine learning datasets, and are designed to work on multiple machine learning frameworks. Today, we're going to find out what the Radeon RX 7600 is capable of in 2024. This budget-friendly GPU was released in May 2023, and we're going to check out how it performs in Fortnite. But before that, let's take a look at the card and to remind ourselves what this thing's made of. Starting off with the basics, the 7600 holds 8GB of GDDR6 memory with a base clock speed of 1720MHz and a boost clock speed of up to 2655. This puts the graphics card in a nice position for handling very fluid 1080p gaming and even venturing into a little 1440p. The 7600's Navi 33 graphics processor brings DirectX 12 Ultimate support, ensuring that all modern games will be playable. And not only that, but it does guarantee hardware rear tracing. And relatively, these stats put the graphics card somewhere within the performance range of an RX 6650 XT and an NVIDIA 4060. So jumping into Fortnite, we're starting off strong with the auto set graphics, which are 1440p high. And for this test, we'll be keeping ray tracing off and you can view the FPS in the top left. Now, I'll be honest, considering this card is typically known for its smooth 1080p performance, I was actually quite surprised at how well it was handling 1440p. I didn't see a dip under 60 FPS a single time. I was averaging between 65 and 75, and it did remain consistent throughout different settings and combat within the game. Yeah, not bad at all. But as nice as 60 FPS is, it's not really held up to the same standard as it used to be. I wanted to try and push the card to hit as close to 144 FPS in 1440, so I dropped the graphics down to medium, and I'd definitely seen a performance boost. I was seeing a consistent performance between 85 and 105 fps and i did genuinely try to tank the frames with some fast gameplay but it held up strong now if you don't care too much about graphics and just want the best performance possible at high resolutions to remain competitive when the graphic settings are set to low in 1440p i began to see that sweet spot of 144 fps fps would fluctuate between 125 and 160 but it did hold up nicely during combat which is obviously the most important thing but that's all the testing i done in 1440p so let's Let's move on to some good old 1080. Now straight away I felt we had some more wiggle room here so I did go straight in with the epic quality preset and I did seem to monitor a respectful 60 FPS when moving around the map. Everything looked great, didn't really get any jitters and again I have to say I am very impressed with these results so far. Okay, since the goal here is to get more frames, I'm gonna jump straight onto the medium graphics and kind of as expected, the frames pretty much doubled. I started to see a steady range between 100 and 125 and this personally felt like the sweet spot for me. I felt like I was getting enough frames to stay competitive and the graphics again, just looked great. However, we still had the low preset to play with. On the low settings in 1080p, the game was easily hitting 165 FPS. In fact, the game didn't drop below 150 at any point, even during combat. And on a bit of a related note, I did actually find it easier to play like this. I suppose less graphical flair and higher frames just made it for a much more competitive experience. Okay, now it's time to test out ray tracing and this actually turned out to be the biggest surprise that I found when playing with the 7600. With 1440p resolution, medium graphic preset and ray tracing enabled, I was seeing a solid 65 to 85 FPS in game. And again, this wasn't me just hiding in a bush somewhere, not moving. I was intentionally trying to bring the frame down with fast movements and this really did look fantastic. I found myself just staring at lights more than actually playing the game and if you're willing to sacrifice a few frames this definitely feels like a no-brainer to me. Nitro Dome in particular looked absolutely stunning so yeah considering I was expecting the frames to tank I was very very pleasantly surprised here. So that brings my testing to an end here and in conclusion the RX 7600 seems to do exactly what it is intended to do. 1080p gameplay is about as smooth as you'd expect and the wiggle room it has for 1440p is quite impressive for such an affordable card. Definitely performed above my expectations. So if you like what you see, click the link in the description to add this card to your custom builds and maybe even give the video a like if you want to see more content similar to this one.